Uh, first, I mean, congratulations on all of the things. Yeah. I mean, this team has accomplished a lot this year. How much fun are you guys having this season uh, in the room and obviously on the ice? It's been such a blast. It's, it's uh, you know, every day you come in and, you know, previous seasons, it's like you win a few games, you lose a few games, and the games you lose, you come in the next day and you kind of, it's kind of dull. It's, it's like, uh, you know, the clouds are in the sky, it's <laughs> raining, you know, it's one of those, but it seems like every day this year, pretty much the exception of just a couple, it's just been fun every day coming to the rink. And I'm not saying we're taking it for granted, but like, it's been such a blast. And I think we're so appreciative of how the season's gone and what everyone's putting into it. And, uh, you know, of course, it's been good. There's a lot of success so far, but we're definitely looking for more once this real deal starts and playoffs kick off in a week here. Charlie, uh, congratulations uh, again for me on the season you guys have had. It's been unbelievable, historic in this league, and uh, nobody really could have had an experience that in the history of the game, right? So it is a special year for you. I want to take you back to September, to training camp, because all us dummies are out there watching and trying to figure it all out. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, Marshan's out and, you know, uh, other players in the in Mick, McAvoy's out, right? This guy's, you know, Krejci's coming back, but he didn't play last year. You got a new coach. I mean, we looked at it as like, maybe it's going to be a tough year for the Bruins because other teams are getting better in the East. What, what, what do you remember about that early going with a new coach in those first few weeks of trying to f put things together? Yeah, you don't really know how it's going to shake out completely. And you hear some of the noise out and about and people saying, well, they're missing this top guy, this top guy, this guy. And, uh, you know, they'll be they'll be lucky to be 500 by the time those guys get back. You know, and I feel like that was some of the talk. So and I guess if some of that kind of creeps in, you're kind of like, hey, let's prove these people wrong. Um, but, yeah, we I mean, we have a guy named Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci <laughs> coming back and playing. Um huge on your team when you have you know centers like those guys um you know down the middle and and what they're still capable of um at their age is 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 awesome um and you know new guys stepping up we got new additions who have played unbelievable and other guys who've taken steps in their game younger guys and uh, i mean i you go on and on and talk about the the goalie tandem we have and what those guys have been for our team kept us in games and uh, it, it's been unbelievable so it's been a kind of just a group effort everyone coming in and that's the sign of a good team is to show our depth and what we're capable of when we have guys out top guys out um you can't replace them individually but together you can all kind of take in and play a part uh have some more responsibility and um, we come together and do that we talk about it a lot and you see what you know what we can accomplish when we do do that Chucky, I, I will say I was one of those guys, so you're welcome. Because I, I, I said you guys were, it's probably the year the Bruins take a step back, but you guys have been phenomenal all the way through. And I remember having a conversation with someone from the organization around, probably around January. And I'm like, I can't believe what's what's yeah. going on here. Like, what what's happening? And the response I got was, Patrice was never going to allow that to happen. And didn't really elaborate more on that. But could you talk about from the beginning of the season, like you mentioned, but the leadership, even to stay on task when we're talking about this potential best team ever, or regular season ever, how do you still stay focused? Because I, I think it could get, you can get a little lackadaisical. A, a normal team would. Yeah, well, thanks for getting us going, Rupper. We, yeah. we appreciate that. Uh, no I try, I try, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I mean, uh, we could talk on and on about Patrice Bergeron too, and what he brings to our team on the ice, but off the ice, everywhere, really. He's, I think we all know, and I don't need to keep harping on that, but it's just his leadership and, and how he sets the tone and, and the way we're, we play, the way we interact with each other. It, it's everything. And um, when times are hard or, you know, there's injuries and we, we address stuff head on and, and we say, hey, all right, what are we going to do about this? You know, we're, other guys get to step up, and he's a guy who steps up and and vocalizes that, and and then goes out and shows by example. So, um, you know, just to follow a guy like that, and it's not just him too. You know, Brad Marchand, David Krejci, Nick Foligno, like these guys who have been there and, and been around the league, know how to win, played on good teams, have played on bad teams. Like they just know, and then they relay it to us, and they do it the right way, and we just follow suit. But um, I guess to your other point. Um, you know, when you're having a lot of success like that and sometimes it's, 
you know, you got to challenge yourselves. And we've been doing that in between, you know, say it's a road trip, you know, a five game road trip. Hey, let's, let's make this uh, kind of like a playoff series. We got to win four out of five or three out of five, you know, stuff like that to kind of keep us in it, keep us, uh, you know, challenge and, and focusing on the task at hand. And I think that's been, that's been huge for us. And then these little milestones along the way, like the wins record, the points record, it's not the end all be all to get it, but it's a nice feather in your cap to accomplish those things. But Hey, you know, we got however many games left, six games left. We, we got to win four of them to break this record. Let's go for it. You know, and that keeps us, you know, better in our game, taking advantage of the opportunity. And yeah, we're all waiting for playoff time to come around. We we're, we're chomping at the bit, but let's take care of business here and get better as a team. And we know that we can do that. So those little challenges along the way during the season in season, as definitely something we've uh, we've done, and I think it's uh, it's been really good for us. So many storylines, right? The history, the wins, uh, you know, getting through that first stretch of the season, missing key players. But there's also been this blossoming friendship between Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark that fans are just obsessed with at this point. So much so that in Philly, when Linus wasn't there, fans online were, were like truly upset that they were not going to get this post-win embrace uh, if it happened in Philly. Um, have you ever been on a team where, where the goaltenders are this close and this tight? Yeah. I mean, when he first asked the question, the last word I heard was friendship. And I think I could have answered it without <laughs> hearing any more. Um, all Mark and Swayman. No, I haven't to, to be honest. And um, it's, it is very special to watch. And it's, it's awesome that two goalies who are, you know, you, you want to play, right? Like it, we're all competitors. We want to play on the same team, but these guys, uh, you know, they take care of each other. They root for each other. Um, you can just tell they, they literally love each other. And that's, that's what it's all about. And I think that's why they're, they're doing so well. And um, they know they have each other's backs and um, they're, they're both playing just unbelievable hockey this whole year. And how lucky are we to have one of them, but two of them, you know, and it's, it's, it's pretty insane to think about, but they're such good buddies off the ice. It's not a charade. Like they, that's how they are. They're just good, solid people. And they're, of course, great goalies. And uh, we're, of course, lucky to have them. But it is it is cool to watch. And the hug, It's it really doesn't <laughs> get old. I mean, we give them some crap from time to time. but And then a guy, if, you know, I think, uh, what was it, last night, I think uh, Lindholm kind of stepped in for Allmark because Allmark left. And um, so there's always a guy there, but it's not the same. And I know the crowd wants that. <laughs> Hopefully more to come. And I would imagine too, it's 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 um, the fact that they are so close and so genuinely tight is it is an advantage for you guys playing in front of them too because you're not worried about like oh this guy hasn't started in a couple games like he's feeling low on himself like they're so tight knit I imagine it's almost a strength for the rest of the team as well that both guys are always going and feeling positive about the season. Yeah, it is. It is. It's that's how they are. They're both positive guys like off the charts and. Um, in practice games, it doesn't matter. And yeah, it's, it's, they just, I can't say enough about them because they have each other's backs all the time. And it's just, it's just a very special friendship and bond that they have together. And yeah, it puts us at ease too. I don't even know if it re we realize that, but now that you kind of bring it up, but we're, you know, we're, we're spoiled in a way where we have those two guys back there when we break down during games, it's, it, you know, we're, we're not even panicking. I don't think, you know, and, <laughs> as we should, we should be, but it's, these guys come up huge on a number of occasions and uh, we're so lucky. And it's just a, an awesome thing to see is two guys like that playing the same position, rooting each other on. Um, it can't get much better than that. Let me ask you about pasta. What do you think of his style? I always, we see him coming to the games. I love his outfits. He's got like, he's one of those guys seems like just cool to hang out with. What's it like being around him all the time? Yeah, it is. It's it's like, I don't know if I envy it or not, because some of the stuff he wears, I'm like, I just can't see myself doing that, you know, but he pulls it off. And then it's one thing to dress like that, but then like go out and you're like, you do OK. He put up he puts up 60 goals and 100 something points like he backs it up 100 percent. And that's just how he is. He's just an easygoing guy. He just does his thing. He's got his style. He's a great hockey player. And it's like it's almost like he plays about a care in the world and, and it just suits him so well. Um, 
And but he's just an awesome guy. He's a great teammate, easy to get along, likes to joke around. Um, but you know, you look up to a guy like that who's had so much success and is uh, is a great goal scorer in this league. So you take bits and pieces and you watch him and how he does things, how he practices, and the reps he does on the ice after practice. Like it's, yeah, he might have some God giving talent, but he works at it. And and that's the cool thing to see is guys who who have that much uh, success and, but then you see the behind the scenes of how they work at it and um, they do it every day. So it's, it's no surprise that he's done what he's done. I mean, it's unbelievable, but it's, it's no surprise with the way he works. Chucky, just, I know this story is still being written, uh, still chapters to be written. You were a first round pick for the San Jose Sharks. Uh, you're a part of that big trade, sends you over to Minnesota. I was fortunate enough to watch you break into the NHL in Minnesota. Called you baby Gronk. We called you just a big <laughs> man child. And I love watching the progression. Did you ever think that all this would bring you back home? You'd be you'd be part of a team that sets an NHL record and be on the cusp of something potentially very significant in your hockey career right now. Your family enjoying it, having them by your side, big family guy. Talk about the some of the emotions that run through play being a Boston Bruin right now. Right. Yeah. I miss those days with your upper. I learned a lot from you. <laughs> Best storyteller I know. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, you know, when you're playing and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but maybe how it is, but it's like, you just take it day by day and you're just trying to earn your spot every day. So you're not really thinking of, Oh, if I played for another team, it's kind of always when the back of your mind, you know, I grew up Boston fan, all my family and friends are Boston fans. So it's like playing in Minnesota. It's like, they kind of have two different teams. Yeah. They root for the wild for me, but, they still love the Bruins. They still talk about them. And I'm like, you know, I'm kind of sick and tired of that. So now to get on playing for the Bruins, everyone's on one team now, family and friends, they all root for the <laughs> one team. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it's, I'm so, so thankful and, and fortunate to be where I am and getting to do what I love um, close to home. I got family, sisters, you know, my wife and, and, and family friend, like everyone is there. I see people I know, from around town and beyond every single day and just getting the support too while while we're doing this it's i wouldn't change it for anything and you never know when it's gonna uh come to an end and you want to make the most of every opportunity and then all of a sudden you're playing on an unbelievable team and it's just it's it's the best of both worlds so you want to make the most of the opportunity we have because these teams don't come around often and yeah it's been a great regular season but you know it it I don't want to say it doesn't mean anything, but it's to us, we have one goal in mind here. And, and I think we all know what that is. So we want to make that possible and, and do it for the people who have supported us, my family, friends, uh, the people from Boston and beyond in the suburbs. Like we want to do it for them too. And that's, what's going to make it very special. Well, I'll tell you what, it has been so much fun to watch this yeah. regular season. Uh, making history left, right, and center yeah. are the Boston Bruins. Uh, we're just a few days away from the postseason, so good luck uh, on the postseason run. Thank you for joining us. We really, really appreciate it, even with the technical difficulties. And I have to get this in as we say goodbye. My buddy Bruce Boudreau loves you. I did your game the <laughs> other day against Philly. He's like, if you see Charlie, tell him I said hi and yeah. I love him. And I'm like, I'm probably not going to see him. But now you're on the show, so there I'll just go. give you that message yes. now. Bruce Boudreau is uh, rooting for you. He loves you, and he wanted me to, to pass that along. I appreciate that. Bruce <laughs> is a great guy. I learned a lot from him. So um, tell him I said hi next time you see him or if he's watching this. But thanks for being <laughs> with me, guys, and I appreciate your time.